Munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to A Munchie Talk. Today I wanted to do something fun just because I've been very structured recently with my whole 25 days of Christmas videos and I thought let's have a little bit of fun. Let's continue with a video series that I previously did which is what pets I do not wish to own and why. These are the pets I wish to own or would be interested in owning and why. Now whether or not I'm going to own these guys in the future time will only tell. I am telling you right now that I am not seeking out any new personal pets. My rescue is my forefront and so I am paying attention to that and to those animals. So the animals I share with you today might be reptiles, farm animals, fish, you name it. But for now, let me tell you which animals I like. So I got my handy dandy phone here because I would probably forget and I bet you there is one or two animals I have forgotten to add on this list. So let's start at the very top. Ducks. I love ducks as a pet. I used to feed my ducks around my apartment complex when I was growing up as a little girl and they really were very personable. They came right up to me. I had a few ducks that I remember naming. One of them was Squeakers. He was a, I think a wood duck and then another one was Golden Duck and so instead of a brown it was gold so she was Golden Duck and then afterwards I never saw her again but I think Golden Duck was a mother and so there was a group of ducks that just kept coming back to our apartment complex who kept feeding them and then they brought their babies and so when I was a young girl I raised um, I want to say 11 ducklings and then one mother which equaled 12 and so she would go back and forth between her nest which was in a very dangerous spot because it was uh, two roads that she walked across. She walked across two roads to get to her nest and to come over and be fed by us and our neighbors. They all survived. They all got really big. I remember one time one of the babies got stuck in a fence and so I had to help it. I just love ducks and I would really like having ducks around here, especially since we have a bigger property. So that animal might be coming up sooner than all these other animals, but since we have a large property now, we can probably do that. That is where we're at, and that's why ducks is number one on my list, although this is not ranked at all. I just want to make a note. I love ducks, and I refuse to eat duck too. That is the only animal I refuse to eat because I raise them. And so the second one is chinchillas. I really, really, really like chinchillas. Their fur is so soft, unfortunately because their fur is so soft that their fur is used for coats and I just I absolutely hate it I, I don't want that whenever I type in chinchilla I get for some reason chinchilla real fur and I just oh I hate it but chinchillas are so soft they live in the mountains and so that's why they have to have like a tear cage makes them feel more at home I would love to just recreate a chinchilla enclosure you know how zoos have those really special iguana enclosures or reptile enclosures they, they actually have a very big display of the animal in a very natural like setting as natural as they can make it I want something like that in my house <laughs> because I just, I love going to the zoo. They're very educational. They are kind of like what us YouTubers who are trying to educate you guys, what they do. They want to educate, they want to preserve, they want to bring awareness, they have programs. A lot of people think zoos are just god awful and terrible, but zoos are changing. And zoos have been for a very long time, very conservative towards where these animals come from and their natural environments and they want to protect them. So that's why there's animals in zoos because some zoos, unfortunately, they have some of the last species on on earth due to the ecosystem where those animals came from being disrupted by humans, fires, waste. I mean, there's just a plethora of things that is just going on. And I'm just very thankful for, especially the zoos around here, to conserve those animals, to protect those animals, and to educate the public and hopefully get the public involved to help out their efforts to saving these guys and their natural environment. Anyways, little shout out there, but I would love to have chinchillas, but at the same time, I have cats and some of my cats are very rodent motivated. While other cats, like for instance, Moxie, which you guys used to see in my pet room all the time because she's completely fine with the small animals. She doesn't do anything with them. She doesn't even like them. Moxie is pretty good. But when it comes to Casper, Bo and Finn, these three boys, 
their trouble. So unfortunately, I don't want to have any larger than a hamster. The next one is all scaly, but colorful and interesting, but has kind of a sad reproduction life. It is the panther chameleon. Now panther chameleons can live, from my understanding, males five to eight years, and then females, unfortunately, they really don't make it past three years due to being reproductive. And if they're laying, then unfortunately that shortens their life. It seems like that's a curse for us females is that if we give birth, there is birthing complications. So we have it on the bad end of the bargain because females, especially unaltered females like cats, dogs, hamsters even, rats, you name it. If you own any of these pets that have female problems, hormonal problems, uh, tumors, pyometra, they get the really bad end of it. So you males out there got it a little bit easier in my opinion, because there has been a lot of female related issues in these small animals such as hamsters that I have taken care of. The panther chameleon to me is very interesting. Now they are more of a watch animal. They're not really one to be taken out all the time. However, you can take them out. You can let them go explore. You can at a very young age, get them used to handling. But they are not the pet that you're just gonna be spending all of your time with, like giving treats to, all that stuff. These guys have a really cool factor about them and that's what I like. I actually went into Peko and saw they had panther chameleons and they were changing colors and they were different colors to begin with and I just love the look of them. But I would also want to make sure that I know what I'm doing because panther chameleons are advanced care. They need special stuff and if you are not aware that what Petco and PetSmart sells is very small things. You need to find other things to use. You need to find or make your own cage. You need to get a big cage. You need to get a bigger setup than just a tiny little crested gecko enclosure. You need the right supplies because they are much bigger than their veiled tail chameleon friends. So I want a panther chameleon, but I at the same time don't think I would ever really get one, but I am totally interested in panther chameleons. Next one, water dragons. Now, there was a few times when I was working at my old pet stores that there was some water dragons. Pet stores don't really like getting them in just because of the amount of care that goes into them. They always seem to come in sickly or they seem to have bad behavior. But there was one water dragon that I fell in love with when I cared for it at my pet store. And unfortunately, they do have a lot of issues, especially with the jaw, especially with hitting their jaw against glass. And unfortunately, the pet store I was working at, they only had glass enclosures and they didn't really have big enclosures for water dragons, which is unfortunate. So it's just an unfortunate situation, but I fell in love with him. I cared for him. I made sure that he had what he needed. His enclosure would always dry out, but he's a water dragon and these guys love water. And when they grow up, if you see them past their juvie stage, because that's what you always see in pet stores, if you see water dragon, they start out like this and then they can get pretty long. They almost remind me like iguanas, but they are much smaller than iguanas. And people I have seen set up some water dragon enclosures on their patio and have it kind of bambooed off. And I think that's really interesting and neat because we kind of do that with the cats. We had like a catio and we bambooed it. Bambooed it? <laughs> We had bamboo on it and secluded the cats and they really enjoyed that. And I thought, you know what, this would be really cool. I do like water dragons. I just, of course, I love dragons to begin with. So that would be an animal I was interested in. I don't know how they would get along with cats. I really don't want to jinx it. So that's another reason why I'm not pursuing a water dragon right now because we have seven cats. But the next one is a rosy boa. Again, all of these I've been falling in love with since working at a pet store, but there was this one that was at my pet store for a year. Nobody wanted her. Turns out it was not a her, it was a him. But I kept calling it a she. <laughs> this guy, he was such a cutie and he was really big too. And he let me take him out, show all the customers. This guy was so well behaved and is a really good beginner snake. Now the uh, common ball python people always gravitate to as being like a beginner snake. Nah, nah. Rosie Boas. Rosie Boas, I feel like, is the perfect beginner snake because of their size. They don't grow that big, as well as they have really cool coat patterns. I know that ball pythons, they have different morphs, but at the same time, Rosie Boas, people, they just don't understand that when their ball python gets to a certain size, they're like, wait, when is this thing gonna stop growing? And they don't, like, ugh, it's just a horrible mess. And a lot of the times, the ball pythons came in with mites. 
Yeah, really, really sucks, especially when you have to bathe that poor snake. You're like, oh, please, please don't resent me or any human contact after this. Oh, I'm so sorry. But there was several times when my pet store came in with mites and or parasites. We lost lots of ball pythons this way and it, it was a mess. Guys, please do not shop at pet stores. Shop local breeders that are ethical, all right, or rescues. If you want to save one that unfortunately has not had a good life, I would recommend that. But breeders are completely fine to go to. No shame in breeders now, guys, because breeders, they do care about the animal, they do care about the genetics. I know that in the reptile community, there's this kind of up and down about breeders and how ethic they really are and how much they really care for the animal because they have like the rack systems. We're not gonna get into anything like that, but I'm just saying, usually breeders care about genetics. They don't care about profits. But uh, there, there's a tipping scale on that. But it's better than only shopping at, say, Petco, PetSmart, mom and pop stores, uh, if you know where they get their animals from, because the supplier that supplies them does cut corners and they aren't coming in looking dandy and fancy. And people just don't understand. When you see the animal on the other side of the glass, that animal could have just arrived that day or that animal was the result of somebody cutting corners and was not the pet store of which they are currently keeping the animal at. So, but um, yeah, Rosie Boas, I really like. That is something that I felt like I would pursue, but I kind of put my foot down and said, no, 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 not right now. But I was very tempted, very tempted. Unfortunately, I did not get the Rosie Boa at my store because I was like, mm, no, I don't want to do it this way. Oh, but they're so cute. Oh, but I really want to. Oh, this is driving me absolutely crazy. And I was looking around on Craigslist for Rosie Boas and there was none. And I was like, well, you are almost completely free. I mean, the poor snake had been there for so long so she was just on on sale for such a long time and nobody wanted her and so we had to keep discounting her and so <laughs> the last able discount I was like you know what maybe I will take her home I don't like to see her just sitting around here but my co-worker took her well him but yeah no he is in a better place now and I miss him next one is guinea pigs now you guys know I made this list by the way before I got in guinea pigs at my rescue so tech right now I am caring for guinea pigs but before I am very interested in guinea pigs my problem is the space that they need and require besides the space my animals my cats Ollie yeah I would love to own guinea pigs they are a herding animal so you kind of want them to herd together but for me I think just caring for the two I have right now is like the perfect amount no more so maybe maybe in the future long furred cats so I fell in love with a cat that I got at the Humane Society. His name is Babushka, AKA Babs. You've probably seen him in my videos as well as on Instagram, on my personal account. And I have never really been the biggest fan of really big fluffy kitties, but ever since, he came into my life. We looked up what species of cat he was and it turns out he's most likely a mix of a Turkish fan, not like pure Turkish fan, because all these traits that he has sounds exactly like a Turkish fan. Except for, I'm not so sure about the water part because he's never really been interested to go in the bath with me, but he is very clingy. So I think that for my next animal, I will look around in shelters and on Craigslist and see if I can find a big, long, fluffy kitty. Cats will always be a big part of my life, but for now we are just, we're stopping at seven because we took in my mom's old senior cat until she passes. Cause unfortunately she's, she's at that point of possibly not making it till Christmas. Yeah, so we are expecting a loss here soon. So the next one is my favorite domesticated dog, and that is a Blue Heeler cattle dog. Now, I do like the original Blue Heeler look, but I really love them when they have this beautiful copper and auburn color. Oh, it's my favorite. Ever since my friend growing up had a Blue Heeler, I fell in love with him, and his name was Shadow. Unfortunately, Shadow got way overweight, and he wasn't really a herding dog anymore. He was just a lazy sit-at-home dog, which is unfortunate because we all kind of felt bad for him because he was such a good boy. And now that we live on a bigger property, I wouldn't mind getting a bigger dog, but since we have small dogs right now, I don't really see that as something I want to pursue right this moment. Next one, hairless hamster. There was an opportunity that I could have adopted a hairless hamster. I chose not to because I felt like the timing wasn't right, but I would love taking care of a hairless hamster. Some people 
might agree, some people might disagree and think they look ugly, but I personally like hairless hamsters. I think they look like little piggies. <laughs> And pigs are cute. The next one, you have to get a permit for. So this is possibly gonna be an animal I'm never gonna own, but I would love a crow. Having a crow as a bird companion, that is the only exception to my not liking of birds as my number one, I don't want this animal ever. Those birds, no. A crow, yes. Crows, I love. I have, I had this one crow that had a weird craw, you know? But he didn't sound like that. He sounded like sound like he had something stuck, but it was just his call. And so he would always come over and get, when the ducks were being fed, that he would always come over and ask for some bread. And so we would give him bread when I was growing up and he was so sweet. I think it would be nice having a crow, but unfortunately you are not allowed to own crows. Nowhere, uh-uh. Nowhere you can own crows. There is like a few people that have permits for crows that are rehabilitators, but unfortunately the general public is not allowed to own crows. Next one is goldfish, specifically the fantails, because I really like their beauty, their look, they look so elegant. They're big fishies that swim around. I would love a fantail. Now I had in the past comic goldfish, which is the regular feeder goldfish, but when I was a child, my mom did not know any better and unfortunately they did not live very very long. Well, I mean, my top is, I want to say six, seven years, but anyways, the goldfish, the fantail goldfish I have been in love with. However, unfortunately, I just never had a really big setup when I was in love with the fantails. And now I'm kind of moving away from tanks. So, well, fish tanks, that is aquariums. So I don't see myself getting a fantail anytime soon, but maybe in the future when I don't have a lot of personal animals, I would like to take care of a fantail goldfish. All right. So so the next one I've wanted since my mom told me I could have one on the patio. <laughs> As the person who grew up with My Little Pony, I mean, of course, I want my own miniature pony or my own personal pony. It's just a typical girl response. Oh, a girl wants a pony. Well, yeah, yeah, it's pretty basic, but I've always loved horses and I wouldn't mind taking care of a mini pony or just a regular horse. But I think a miniature pony would be quite interesting to take care of. And they are used in some fields for uh, therapy animals. So that is interesting and I think I would love a pony. So we're getting down to the last four animals and the last one uh, that I really wanted and think I will be getting in the future or sometime in the near future, I'll list as very last. But the next one is a Pac-Man frog. I like how simple they are. They are just an animal that I personally wouldn't mind taking care of. Now I am taking care of African fat tail gecko right now and a salamander. And so the Pac-Man frog's care is very similar to that of my salamander. And so I thought that maybe once my salamander uh, unfortunately passes, you know, in the in the near future because Hank Hill is doing wonderful. Peggy Hill unfortunately passed away last year, but Hank Hill loves his little tunnel system that I created him and he's just thriving, but I would in the future consider getting a Pac-Man frog. Nothing really special about them. I just find them to be pleasant to take care of. And then of course there is the crested gecko. Now I have had so much handling at my own job of crested geckos and I wouldn't mind looking into possibly owning a crested gecko in the future, especially if they come from ethical breeders because at the uh, Northwest Pet Expo, the Reptile Pet Expo, we were able to, me and my friend, handle some really good retired breeders and they were just so well behaved and they were so massive, bigger than a pet store crested gecko. And so you can tell just by the way they were talking to us and just by the way they let us handle their crested geckos, it was so pleasant. So I wouldn't mind owning a crested gecko in the future, especially from an ethical breeder. So the second one is goats. And I have liked goats for a long time. I thought I was more into sheep at one point, but then I was like, nope, goats. I I like goats and they just have such wonderful personalities. They remind me a lot of dogs, <laughs> but I like goats. My family does have goats. So that's just piqued my interest with wanting to own goats. But for right now, they're not really an animal that I would consider getting just because they are a lot of work and depending on the area that they're in, they just don't like wetlands. They don't like being in mud and wet. And unfortunately that is where we are at on our property 
is just nothing but ugh. So I wouldn't want a goat that does not like to get their hooves dirty and a goat that unfortunately is in that muddy situation will have really bad hoofs if not properly walking on solid ground. And I just don't want to do that to a goat. So no, 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 no goats right now. But the number one animal that we are definitely going to be getting in the future and would like to get is chickens. Just because we are in a good place, I have thought of a really cool chicken coop. We were kind of already in the process of getting something going and started and I think that it is very likely we will be getting chickens next year. So what type of chickens you wonder? Well my number one chicken that I've fallen in love with since visiting as a child a very old farm and them having this specific chicken that would walk around freely, bop in its head, is a silky chicken. Love silky chickens or Polish chickens. These guys they just appeal to me so much more. I know they are not the basic hens and chickens you would get when it comes to producing eggs. I don't really care too much about my eggs, but we would be having chickens so we can have our own eggs. And I would like just to experience being an owner of a silky. Many silkies maybe, yeah. <laughs> but we do live in a heavily dense area and there has been predators around here. Now this area used to be filled with a bunch of farm animals and yada yada yada, but unfortunately there has been some pretty bad predators. So what I wanna do is actually build a very secure and safe area when there's an outside compartment for the chicken so they are not like free roaming on the property. They do have their own outside compartment and they can go inside whenever they want. So that is my list of animals I would love to own in the future and or am interested in right now. So thanks guys for watching. If you liked today's video, hit the like to show your support. Comment down below with you. Comment down below with your favorite animal. Let me know if maybe one of the animals on my list is your favorite animal. And if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.